Welcome back to Medical Survival 101 Part 3. I am Dr. Sini, a supply chain leader from the corporate world and host for this episode. I am in conversation with Dr. Deepak about what we can do as we travel through our journey in a medical facility. Most of the time when we go to a medical facility for illness or injury, we don't even know what has happened to us. We don't know what disease has occurred, what is the prognosis, how long it will take to heal, whatever line of treatment is given, is there a complication to it? What options do we have? We feel completely out of control. We are most of the time not even allowed to figure out what is going to happen to our body. To feel better about the whole process and feel more in control, I'm going to have Dr. Deepak in conversation here. Dr. Deepak is a very uh, accomplished lifestyle physician and an icon in himself of good health, excellent fitness and a joy uh, on his face. Dr. Deepak, welcome to the show. Hi, Dr. Sini. Dr. Deepak, uh, whenever we visit a medical facility and are going through the, the process of treatment, what can we do to feel more informed, uh, in control and understand uh, the whole process? Yeah, navigating medical care is such a terrifying, you know, experience. It's like going to a horror game. <laughs> so, because we are not aware of what disease we have, we are not aware of, you know, why we are investigating, why we have to go again and again to the lab. We are not aware of what options of therapy we have. Yeah. We are not aware of whether surgery is optional or whether it is mandatory. We are not aware of the complications of surgery. We are not aware of anything. We just blindly go, you know, with the you know, blindfolded uh, manner and we just execute whatever is told to us. And uh, this is uh, very wrong. We need to correct it by asking the right questions about each stage of your navigation in uh, medical care. Right. Dr. Deepak, what questions should we ask our physician about the disease? We must ask our physician right at the beginning about our disease. First, which organ system is affected? Whether it's your heart, whether it's your lung, whether it's your brain, whether it's your liver, yeah. whether it's your kidney, which organ system is affected? Number two, you need to ask, what is the cause of this? Is it trauma? Is it inflammation? Is it degeneration? And number three, how long it's going to take to heal? Then comes the investigation and tests. What should we ask uh, about investigation and tests that are there? It's very important that we ask the doctor about investigations and testing. One, is it absolutely necessary to investigate? Two, should we confirm the diagnosis by doing laboratory tests, mm -hmm. blood, urine, stool samples? Three, should we see the extent of disease with scans, CT scan, MRI. Now CT scan has a lot of radiation, so MRI is better. Right. And number four, is there any need for invasive procedures right. like yeah. scoping? So then comes the treatment. So what question should we ask about the treatment of the disease? It's very important to ask your doctor before beginning treatment. First, is treatment really necessary or can we wait for the body to resolve it? Second, how long is the treatment going to last? And third, what kind of treatment is it going to be? Is it going to be medical, with medications, is it going to be surgical or any other invasive procedure? Yes. So it's very, very important. And how efficient this treatment is going to be? Mm -hmm. Whether it's going to really cure everything or whether, you know, we will try and we'll have to see whether it works or not. So important to ask you know such questions very very interesting so uh, if the treatment is in outpatient clinic then you know what should be our approach what should we ask yeah if the treatment is in the doctor's office what we call as outpatient treatment you know where you simply go to a doctor you get treated and you come back yeah. then it's very important to ask him what medications are you going to give me now, out of the list of say 10 medications which he has prescribed, which are the most important primary medications which are going to heal mm -hmm. and which are supplements, yeah. minerals, vitamins, you know, yeah. it's not, not uh, the primary. Right. Right. What are the possible side effects I can expect 
of each medication very important and uh, that's that's what you should uh, you know ask it and here comes the scary part if there is a intervention or a surgery is advised then uh, what can a patient do yeah it's very important that you are informed about each and every factor if a surgery is advised yeah. a surgery or invasive procedure is a procedure where you know your body is uh, uh, intubated like you know endoscopy or you know cut so very very important that before you undergo a procedure like this you need to ask certain definitive questions one is this surgery absolutely needed <laughs> two what will happen if i delay this surgery right and three what are the possible complications of this surgery in great detail yeah. like what are the possible complications of anesthesia what yeah. are possible post op complications and what could be the result of this surgery how much of me is going to heal so during the course of treatment in case hospitalization is advised then uh, what should a patient do in such a matter yes now this is the scary part you know <laughs> hospitalization <laughs> if at all you need to be hospitalized again you need to ask him i uh, is this absolutely necessary are you hospitalizing me for what for monitoring or for therapy yeah. or for observation very important because you know the monitoring and observation can perhaps be also requested at home yeah. and if you are going to hospitalize me then how many days i'm going to be in the hospital and uh, are we going to take some specialist opinions and can i bring my own specialist to take a look and opine yeah. and most importantly if i need to discharge and go to another hospital will you be able to organize that very important <laughs> crucial and then there are some very, very critical cases where uh, icu admission is advised and of course patients are scared at that moment but what should they do to be better intensive care unit very important part of critical care the patient has to be critical before going to icu you know you cannot <laughs> you cannot take a patient of fever and put him in icu okay yeah. so either his cardiac function his respiratory function yeah. breathing you say or his consciousness you know like in coma yeah. should be compromised or his organ should be in failure only then icu is advised yeah. so make sure that you know your icu merits you know its uh, parameters right. and uh, always be clear about ventilator hmm. dialysis stuff like this right right if you are opposed to that you say i would not want to go in for this unless of course we confirm it by a panel of experts and uh, i hope you are not putting me into icu and uh, it's not good these things are not going to follow you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so very 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 important that you are informed consent yeah. and whether you need to resuscitate be resuscitated or not yeah. that also is your personal choice doctor now that there is everybody has internet access people want to know about their illness they want to research and you know feel informed what what should they search on what should they read about uh, for it's very important if you are navigating medical care you need to do some research you know go through chat gpt go through online studies you know and be informed about what is your illness how long is going to last what are the possible complications what therapy can you take what are the drugs used to treat and what do they do mm-hmm. what are the side effects of those drugs what interventional or surgical procedures you know are Uh, carried out yes. and what are their success rate very important success wow. rate mm-hmm. and what are the possible complications mm. of surgery how long it will take for you to recover so you know yes. and uh, when will you be able to get back to office <laughs> <laughs> that's a long shot <laughs> yes. so these days almost everybody takes medical insurance uh, to make sure you know they have because they don't know if they will have enough money for a treatment now when there is medical admission what questions should be asked from the insurance company so that they feel you know financially sorted when you get into a medical crisis and you are going to bank upon insurance hmm. it's important to ask your insurance what is my limit of cover right. basic question yes, everyone yes, does that yes but second important thing is what is covered and what is not covered yeah. which nobody knows which nobody knows. asks yes, yes. you see like for example for cancer yes. is only surgery covered or is chemo covered or mm-hmm. is radiotherapy which is expensive whether that is also covered or not is important that you ask yeah. 
don't be too sure that your insurance company will cover everything and number 3 it's important to ask them whether there are certain investigations mm. like you know your ct scans and mris repeatedly which can be quite expensive yeah yeah it's uh, if you do a series of 5 ct scans or you know 10 mris over a month or two yeah. for patient of stroke it's important to know whether that's covered or not understand great sir if i have a relative who is uh, unwell is going through the treatment and managing it when the patient wants to know what's happening the relatives want to know what's happening so what should i tell them what do you tell the patient or what do you ask the patient before he gets admitted especially if he's your relative right. or you're the one admitting him right, right. very important if the patient is elderly hmm. you see is your grandfather father or whatever yeah. you need to ask him first or her first whether she really wants to get treated you know people who are at the end of their life or terminal they need not they yeah, really yeah. don't want to get treated yeah. so it's a, it's very important you to ask them this yeah. number 2 what kind of treatment they want yeah. they want treatment in the doctor's clinic they want treatment in you know the hospital oh. or they want to go to intensive care very important number 3 we must be very clear about their options of ventilator dialysis you know right, right. chemotherapy yeah. their choice their yeah we have to ask them yeah. and lastly we must ask them whether they need to be resuscitated or not mm. what is their choice yeah, yeah. so there i recently read in the newspaper something around dnr some you know conversation going on about it what are what is it what what are your uh, thoughts about it what can be done around that see dnr is do not resuscitate mm. now do not resuscitate is a kind of a will which the patient signs if he does not wish to go on ventilator or any kind of live resuscitation so it's every person's right now as per court rulings that we can all decide whether we need to be resuscitated or not whether oh. we we can we should be put on ventilator or we should not be put on ventilator right so it's very important because you know ventilator prolongs life but it may also prolong suffering mm. so it's very important to ask the patient you know especially who is terminal yeah. if you want us to resuscitate you or oh, not yeah. and his wishes or their wishes should be respected So I heard something around dama. What what is that? Dama. Dama <laughs> is discharge against medical advice. Oh. You see, many a times you end up in the hospital uh-huh. and you are not uh, doing too well, and you may want to go to a, a more specialized uh, setup and seek better treatment. Right. right. Now ma- many times doctor will say you are too critical, so you know you can't be moved. Yeah. This is important to know that you have a right to discharge against medical advice and be transported. you mm-hmm. know with all your right uh, uh, vital resuscitation right. into another facility you right. see which okay. uh, of your choice right. so dama is discharge against medical advice you know you have the right to request your doctor to allow you to shift to a, a different setup or better setup wow very informative sir i as a patient if i am getting admitted in hospital what should be my attitude towards the whole journey See the attitude of the patient is important. The patient has to be patient. He has to be, he has to be tolerant. <laughs> he has to be tolerant. Yeah. You see, he cannot think if if I pay more and I get the best medical facility, I will heal like this. No, the body will heal. It take its own time to heal. You have to be patient. You cannot bring you know your work and you cannot bring your other priorities and say, well, I am going to save the world mm. and uh, <laughs> therefore like you better heal me fast. so it doesn't work like that right, right. so patient needs to be patient he needs to trust you know in the medical judgment and he can ask for you know more opinion specialist right. opinions right. he can be informed he can read up mm-hmm. research mm-hmm. and uh, he he can you know uh, always ask for uh, shifting over to a better person that's why they are called patient <laughs> <laughs> So when an elderly in a family is dying, is in a terminal scenario, it's a very difficult situation for the relatives. How should they handle that whole process? Attitude of the relatives towards a terminal elderly patient, you know, that if your old father, or old mother, or old mm-hmm. grandfather is on his deathbed, yeah. what should be the attitude of you know uh, the relative? who is going to navigate medical care yeah. for that person it's very important that we respect the wishes of our elderly terminal patients 
whether they want to be treated or not whether they want to get into icu or not mm. whether you know they are okay with tubes being put into their nose tubes being put into their you know different orifices like bladder and yeah. rectum or any man we have we've got to ask them whether you're okay with this if they are okay with it well good mm. even ventilator dialysis terminal you have to ask them you know whether you want to be doing this or not and if the terminal patient says no then we have to respect them we cannot make up for a lifetime of gratitude which we owe our patients by just simply offering the best medical care and spending you know hugely with your pocket and think it's right. redemption right. it's not redemption we got to really care for them and not make up by spending money the right conversation between the relatives and patient which should be there for the relatives with the answers to these queries uh, partly given by doctor and some from online reads and research i'm sure a patient and his or her relatives will feel more empowered and in control and probably will have a more positive experience as they navigate through the medical journey uh and uh, it will surely make uh, the whole healing process happier uh, and and more joyful than it is there yeah even i think that while navigating medicare it's very important that the patient asks questions to the doctors and gets fully informed about you know what processes are going to be carried out it's important that the doctor also understands the patient right. that it's a patient's right to explain to the patient mm. okay, what is going to do and what are the chances of success and it's important for the relatives to understand that we cannot buy the most expensive medical treatment but we need to approach it with whatever the patient you know uh, is okay with and don't bring more discomfort to the already ill patient right. so <laughs> no no that this is an interesting take on the whole journey because it's not just about uh, doing whatever max can be done but giving max comfort it's not about more money it's about more uh, comfort to the patient so yes so that's why when we say medicare you know more than medical treatment the word care, care is important is, yeah. that one should feel very confident going to hospital one should feel that when the doctor comes you know i am going to feel very happy joy you know i get joy that doctor came and told me don't worry you know all will be cool yeah. good association yes and when we look at the relatives as patients we should feel yeah, how much our relatives love us you know and uh, it should all be a very happy 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 equation so in it uh, i mean if you know all this is uh, available to patients they will feel more empowered and this was a very very informative very empowering uh, conversation thank you so much sir for your time and <laughs> wisdom Yeah. and i really hope the audience will use all this knowledge for their own benefit yeah did you did you like it i i loved it i loved it okay. I feel, and i feel did you feel more comfortable I about feel, navigating medical care i i hope to feel more comfortable yeah. but i'll surely feel more confident so when when are you going to get admitted <laughs> next to a hospital i hope not so yes <laughs> i hope not uh but see, we have we have to change that we say i hope not you know i hope not is born, born out of fear born out of you know uh, aversion and yeah. born out of lot of like discomfort yeah, 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 but yeah. when we say we go to a doctor yeah. we must go to a doctor to enforce that a body will do good yeah. and not to believe that things have gone wrong in his yeah. cerebral right. yeah. so i'm glad that we had this conversation thank you sir thank and you i look forward to more interactions with you